MMA Roadshow, episode number 90 and a half. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is with me. I see you, Cold Coffee, over there grabbing one of those award-winning people. Did you just shoot yourself just, in the face with I the PBR? I just got jizzed in the face. <laughs> That's a hell of a way to start episode number <laughs> 90 and a half. We are, uh, we are back in the room here. Well, I say the room. We roll two rooms. We're grown men. We need separate rooms. Yeah. We're back in my room right now at the Hotel Motel. Holiday, Holiday Inn, Inn that has served as the host all week long for UFC on Fox 22, Van Zant versus Watterson here in Sacramento, California. And listen, man, we said it going in that uh, I thought at the end of the day we were going to get a fun fight card. And I tell you what, at the end of the day, I think we got a fun fight card. Yeah, I- we sure did. We sure did. Crowd seemed into it. Fight Fighters were into it. Good fights. Uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. West Coast Fox shows are the best. They uh, – the West Coast Fox shows end at uh, around 7 p.m., which is awesome, man. We were out of the – well, we weren't out of the arena. It took us a while to get out of the arena. But uh, it's not 6 o'clock in the morning as we sit here. We had a chance to sneak out, mm-hmm. get a couple of cocktails in us, maybe have a little dinner, and then come back and do the road show. So just just loved everything about the evening. I will say this. Um, the new arena is gorgeous, man. The, the, the Golden One Center, as it's called. It's right here downtown, which is awesome. I mean, the location of it's phenomenal. The uh, <laughs> the venue itself is cool. Very friendly people, as we found out yesterday at the weigh-ins when we just snuck in through an open door. Very trusting. Very trusting. Well, it wasn't like we like snuck in. It's not like I can I can imagine listeners are thinking like, oh, we creeped into a, a side door and we're we're crouching around. But no, I mean the doors were wide open, so we. <laughs> Just walked in, trying to find where the box office was, and nobody chose to stop us. We you know? walked around that. But bitch we walked for with a good... the purpose. I mean, like I had my <laughs> tripod, I had my camera gear. They definitely probably were thinking like, oh, okay, they must be with the, the 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 organization or we something. We definitely didn't make eye contact with anybody. And that's right. Never, d- don't give them an option. <laughs> don't give them an opening. But it's a beautiful venue. But I will say this: um, Sleep Train Arena, or as we knew it for a long time, Arco Center, I believe. Uh, was a lot louder. There was the, there was something about the acoustics of that building. It was famous as an NBA arena, as one of the loudest arenas, and it was amazing. Uh, it was one of the loudest venues I've, I ever remember being in. And this new one, I don't think the volume traveled quite the same way. And I'm not sure you're more into, like, production and stuff than me. I don't know if you can design venues with that in mind or if it just ends up being kind of a holy shit luck of the draw, the way this thing was built. It happens to be very loud. But the old building was, like, super loud. Yeah, I'm sure they can, and depending on the materials that it's built, reflect sound better. So they probably built this one, you know, more in mind of if there's a concert or something going Mm. on, it maybe doesn't affect or resonate outside, maybe, you know, just in a bowl or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it takes into account all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, because it's a fantastic facility. I mean, even going in the press rooms that they had set up, the wire, I mean, me as a geek or whatever, just the wiring hookups, the way they had it ran. So at the press room, you know, they had nice inputs that run back to the back so that if a truck's pulled in, if there's a broadcast, you could jack into the wall there. And then there's a uh, the wall outlets by where the trucks would pull in that you can feed lines to it. So, like, it's set up. It's set up really, really nicely. Um, but, yeah, I could see where maybe – in the design the way that the the the, the seats because I like the way that the seats were angled as well it looked like there were a lot of really good seats yeah. there so maybe the way that it was it doesn't reflect the sound back down to the area where you're you would normally be seating but who knows maybe up top where sounds different you know it, it might sound different it might be loud up at the top but uh, beautiful beautiful place and uh, very technically advanced as we'd seen some stuff you know usa today did a, a video uh once or there was some stuff highlighting the air control system the ac system in there and all this other high tech stuff there was stuff. like vents underneath the seats uh, and stuff. underneath the seats and stuff so they can you know better climate control it and stuff it's pretty pretty fantastic what they're doing so i'm sure the way that it sounds in there everything was done by design you know so and i'm gonna say plenty of room for us to work in the press area unlike you know, t- t- mobile arena yeah. with the, <laughs> where we have to set up in a tent outside yeah. in our billion dollar home venue. Yeah. Well, who knows? Now, now the the Golden Knights will be coming there soon. Hopefully, that will uh, change and we'll be ranting and raving how good it is at T-Mobile. But yeah, right now it's uh, it's a little lacking. You know, especially when you've seen something as nice as this, you're like, wow. It, 
this is what it's it can notch. be like. It's top notch. This is what it can be like. Top notch. So. All right, well, let's talk about the fights themselves. Michelle Watterson defeated Paige Van Zandt in the main event. Technical submission put Paige Van Zandt to sleep. I guess, uh, you know, Paige got a lot of credit from people for, for going out like a warrior, going out on her shield. Um, I don't know that fighters should feel like they have to go unconscious if they get trapped in that position, but I'm not going to lie. I have more respect for them when they do, when they don't tap. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have a lot of respect for Paige Van Zandt. But, man, can we just talk about Michelle Watterson? I picked Michelle Watterson in this fight, but I, was, I felt a little risky about it. You know, the layoff that she's had, the pace that Paige Van Zandt sets, the fact that really – Michelle Watterson is an atom weight who's fighting up a division. I mean, I was concerned about a lot of these things, but I picked her anyway. I thought that kind of her experience would give her the edge here, and I did worry that maybe the distractions for Paige Van Zandt of being the headliner at home you know, might ultimately play into it somehow. I don't know whether it did or not because Michelle Watterson, the execution of that beautiful little head and arm throw that she had – and the way she got to the back and just lashed herself yeah. on, god damn, just, I, I can't say enough. That was, to me, an incredible performance by the Karate Hottie. Yeah, and and I have to thank Paige. The fact that it probably was at home and the crowd is probably what gave her the strength to push through it a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. I thought she would have tapped a while. A while. There, was, mm -hmm. there was points where it looked locked in. You know, and then it didn't even look like she was attacking the hands to try to to break free. And I'm thinking like, oh, it's done. Then all of a sudden, you just, this, she would just get this little burst of energy and grab the hand, released it. But then, you know, Michelle would lock it in again, you know, a, a different way or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if it probably wasn't for it being a home crowd, I think she probably would have tapped out sooner. But I think it gave her some strength to try to muscle through it. Um, kudos to her. You're right. I mean. Uh, you know, nobody wants to see. I mean, it's fun, I guess. Sometimes when you see somebody actually go out, then you're like, "Wow, they didn't, they didn't tap," or that's how quick it can happen, you know. And you admire the skill of the the person that's able to to put the submission on. But you know, it's I don't know. There's some about you know, little sweet page. You know, part of you's like, "Oh man, you don't want to see her actually go out out," but. Uh, kudos to her for doing it and it was funny because i mean she literally looked like and it was weird she looked like she went limp mm -hmm. so i'm thinking like she's out but as soon as they tapped and they stopped it then and michelle lifted her arm up she sat right up right just immediately there so then i was like all right was she really out you know or finally got to the point where she was just like was, i'm stuck she was <laughs> willing to go out right but the ref saw that recognized it stopped it just in the probably that hazy part where she's Already saw the stars and it was darkening and all that other good stuff, you know. So I don't know, but kudos. I mean, Michelle was looked amazing. I thought it was super, super impressive how good she was. And uh, it's funny. I th I thought it would have been uh, maybe a little bit closer. I thought Paige was going to be able to impose a little bit of her strength and push her up against Cage. And it was Michelle right. that was actually pushing Paige up against the cage. Yep. And really forced her will. So, man, she's it's tough, 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 man. But, uh, yeah, Karate Hottie, we got to – she needs another nickname, though. We were talking in the back how we kind of feel like weird saying the Karate Hottie. It is weird. Even when I just said it now, I was like, I can't believe that came out of my mouth. Yeah, like, I mean I've – I've, I don't know. I mean, I don't she's know that hot. I'm, and oh, she, she does karate. So, I get the Karate Hottie thing, but I'm wondering if she ever wants to revisit that and like – Oh, I'm sure. All right, now I, got, sure. now I got the little kid. I got the whatever and – you know, all of us feel like, I feel like a fucking perv every time I say, I oh, the karate hottie. I'm just like, uh. I'm with you on that. I just, but, li I literally just felt stupid for saying that. I'm like, yeah, I, can't, I can't believe we gotta, it. We got to, we got to, we got to push it to get another one, but whatever. I, uh, all right. So here's, here's one thing. And, it, and it's easy to say this in retrospect or whatever. And it, and it's kind of, I don't even know if it's a fair evaluation because it seems like Paige is literally like always smiling and always happy. But I will say all the face-offs that they had this week and the, the, the open workouts where they both kind of like were dancing and having fun. Mm -hmm. And then they did that little, you know, at the at the ceremonial weigh-ins, they did like the little dance battle or whatever. I thought it was all kind of a little bit weird. I mean, I, it, not that every fight has to be like blood sport, you know what I right. mean? I think it's cool. Um, but I will say, I feel like tonight when we saw Michelle Watterson enter the cage, she was business, man. She yeah. was focused. Like, all that fun and games and smiling and laughing and, hey, we're all just here to have a fun time. 
That was over. And I feel like Paige was still kind of like smiling. Look at look at me. I'm in, you know, I'm in Sacramento and yeah. welcome to my house. It's the Golden One Center. I'm a you know, <laughs> I don't you know. I was like, is that I, how that song goes? I think so. I think that's how it goes. <laughs> um no, but it, and and I, I I almost think it's unfair because again, um I feel like Paige has always got that smile on her face, but I don't know, man. There was something that, that I feel like Michelle Watterson kicked it into a gear tonight that maybe Paige didn't kick it in. I mean, did you pick up on that at all as, as the fight was kind of starting? I, I guess I could see that. Um, but I think that's probably something that she's even been saying throughout the week that she thought her overall technique and the that she was more skilled, more advanced, more experienced than Paige, that that would, that would yeah. bring her the victory. And, and maybe that was just going to a show, but... But also, too, I mean, I think she's just had a lot more life experience than Paige as well. So I think she can she sure. can take the humor and can take the fun. But, I mean, she's a mother. She's dealt with injuries. She's dealt with time off where she, she's really now – she's trying to make a run back at it. She's had a lot of time taken away from fighting that now she she can have fun and do the things, you know, like during the, during the, the week when it's all fun and games, it's all about show. It's all media events during the week. I mean, none of that – really is doing anything to play up for the fight. So I think most fighters can get with the program. They know it's about the fans. Oh, let's go out and do it. So I think, Michelle, what's great about her is that she'll play to the fans. She'll do whatever. But she also, I think, yeah, can just switch it on and, and go to business mode because I think she's she's just uh, she's had a lot more life, I think, life experiences to where – she can she can keep it in context maybe a little better. Not that Paige doesn't take it serious when when she does it when she got in there. But you're right. I think um, being a host and we've seen this when other people have been uh, from the locale where the vent is. You know, Fabricio he couldn't stop goofing around when right, he was down there. Down you know, and and a lot of people say that maybe was why why he lost the belt that he wasn't fully there. Um, it's an immense amount of pressure to be that home person. You know, trying to play to the crowd. You want to keep them happy. And even in the presser, she she ended by saying, you know, that how she was just happy to be able to perform in front of the Sacramento crowd, you know. Um, so that was something that really was weighing on her mind. So maybe it was a little bit slower for her to switch into that mode because she was still feeling like, I have to keep my fan, the fans entertained, so let me do whatever. But um, I, still, I still think she definitely was taking it – as serious, maybe sure. she maybe she just didn't show it as much or look as much, but um, but yeah, I mean Michelle, I mean she's 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 when she's focused and, and she's locked in there, man, she is incredible, incredible. She's stuff. fantastic. Well, I, I will say I, I do want to touch on Paige Van Zandt real quick because uh, you want to touch Paige Van Zandt? Oh my God, you already made me feel like a perv for saying the karate hottie. Now you, now you said karate that. hottie, and now you're talking about touching Jeez. touching on Paige. All right, podcast is over. Uh, <laughs> No. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Uh, all the respect in the world to Paige Van Zant to show up to the press conference again, second time. I mean, it, it's a yeah. different situation than last time when she lost. Because last time when she lost, she just got dominated like from bell to bell. You know what I mean? Like it was it was a, a long, uh, you know, extenuated beatdown, so to speak. And, and she still showed up tonight. I don't want to say that. It, I mean, it was kind of a. I know it was a submission, but it was kind of one of those she got caught. You know what I mean? Like she just got in a bad position very early on, and she got caught. So, you know, less physically taxing and mentally taxing, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but it was obvious that she was fighting back tears as she was talking to us. And um, kudos to her for, for doing it. And her attitude was awesome. You know, yeah. her attitude, her will is so strong that she's just like – Yeah. Because, you know, I asked her some questions like, hey, do you feel like maybe it's time to take a step back? Maybe you've been rushed a little bit. And she's like – Hell no. I belong in the spotlight. I'm meant for this sport. Yep. I'm going to be there. And I thought her attitude was phenomenal. Yeah, and you're right. And I, and I thought just even in seeing that growth, you know, she told the stories. Like, she was very, very open the last time. And I think in part of telling that story, she got emotional. Mm -hmm. We actually saw some tears on, you know, up there while she's speaking. This time, she mentioned the sort of same thing as well. But then she kind of lighthearted said how she got her emotions in the back didn't want to cry up there whatever and we didn't see it i thought there was a moment where her voice got a little thick mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. but but there weren't there weren't the tears there wasn't the thing so i mean she's already grown from the past and dealing with a loss dealing with you know 
adverse things and she's dealing with it better already. So I, right there I was like, oh, wow, she's already – not that she hasn't grown, but time. You could tell the experience. She's now chalking up these life experiences of some of these things that it's just going to make keep making her a stronger, stronger person. But that was one of the things I noticed. I was like I was wondering if it was going to affect her because – this even more so than the other. I mean, headlining the card, you know, in the in the hometown or the locale where she chooses Her to be adopted home. hometown. Yeah. yeah. Um, this could have been that moment where it happened again, but um, she took it like a champ, you know. I mean, she took her she took her bumps and bruises and went out there and, and said the right things. And I thought it was good. I mean, I, I thought it she's was good. She's 22, bro. Yeah, she's got a 22, lot. 22, man. She's going to be around. Yeah, she's dude. got a lot more great things coming. So She really does. Um, all right, so Michelle Watterson, interesting. You know, she had such a long layoff that the, 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 the division kind of moved forward quite a bit while she was gone, and things have kind of started to sort themselves out a little bit. Um, in the, the MMA Junkie USA Today rankings, we had her listed as an honorable mention coming into this week. She'll definitely break into the top 15, I, I believe, with the win. Uh, Mr. George Garcia, gorgeous George, uh, heads up those those rankings. But i got to believe uh, that, that she'll be moving in. But uh, a couple uh, – not that I want to take away from the young Mike Bond and all the great things that he does in, in filling Joe Silva's shoes and, uh, you know, do, doing all the matchmaking pieces. But a couple of names out there that I think would be fun for her are either uh, Joanne Calderwood, who's coming off a loss, so maybe not as attractive as an opponent, but I think it still makes some sense stylistically. And I think, honestly, within the UFC fan base, Joanne might still have the bigger name. Like, she's kind of been a little bit more active than, than she has. Or maybe Marina Moros. Um, I think stylistically that could be a fun fight as well. Um, there's a couple other people that are already kind of matched up. Maybe, you know, maybe timing's not right, but... Uh, I don't know. I think both those both those fights sound uh, sound a lot of fun stylistically for me. Yeah, sounds good. Let's let's get her in there again soon. Let's get it booked. I think she wants to fight again soon. Uh, we talked to her briefly at the uh, the new style post fight press conference. The way things are done now, one on one, we're not putting a full dais up there anymore. I I, I like it. I know some people. It's don't. not bad. Yeah, it's like good it. once it gets rolling. Once it gets going, but then you have something like happened today where Uriah. They probably could have. Maybe saved him a little yeah. bit or something because you, they should have known that he was going to run long. Yeah, he went 22 minutes. So, you know, at that point, everybody was queued up waiting at that point. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe Michelle was finishing off some sort of Fox duties. Fox duties or something, you know, but for the most part, everybody was queued up waiting. And that's the only thing that probably sucks for them where they're like, well, I still got two dudes ahead of me and they're still in their fucking. Talking to right, but I think PR did. I think they do a good job usually of cutting that off. But I think they allowed it because they knew this was, yeah, or possibly the, the, local, the last time. I don't know if you did. Did you pick up like after Uriah left, like a bunch of the media left too? Yeah, sure they, did. They were like, the All right, I'm done. like we had two different camera guys that were up on the riser behind us, local news guys, leave. And this was before the main event even got, came to the press conference. There. So but yeah, it was. It was they got what they needed. Yeah, they got what they needed. All right, well, uh, we're we're gonna refreshen up these uh, frosty beverages right here. And uh, while we do that, listen to uh, a couple of quick minutes with your main event winner, Michelle, insert new nickname here, Watterson. Hi. Congratulations on uh, obviously a very, very impressive win for you tonight. I want to ask first about the mindset. You know, you admitted earlier this week, as much fun as you were having and smiling, that you were actually very nervous. Um, how did you feel as you were walking in? Because it looked like you were kind of all business. Yeah, you know, um, I had to stay focused. I had to stay concentrated, and I just had to be in the present moment. Um, I'm I'm coming into her hometown. You know, the crowd was cheering like crazy, so I just had to stay focused on the task at hand. She praised you, of course, that she need to work on her jiu-jitsu. Did you think that the ground game and the jiu-jitsu would be where you would win this fight? Uh, you know, we prepared for everything because she, you know, she's still, she's she's a very good fighter and she's um, she's learning and she gets better every every fight. And so we wanted to make sure that we were prepared for for every scenario. And so stand up, ground against the cage, um, wherever the fight would have gone in the five rounds that we had, we were made sure that we were prepared for it. You lost a lot of valuable time, of course, with the layoff. Um, so what What now? I mean, do you feel like you need to make up for that and fight more frequently, or do you want to kind of take things slow? What, what do you think the right plan is for you? Um, whatever the UFC has planned for me, I, I, I'm in great condition. I feel amazing. Um, 
you know, the year and a half really allowed me to become comfortable in my skin and, and know who I am as a fighter and, and know that this is where I belong. And I, I don't need to force anything. You mentioned, you mentioned it in your post-fight comments about that green comment, which, mm -hmm. which like really started to take off. Was that, yeah. Were you not happy with the, the way that, I guess, that, that comment took off? Yeah, you know, because I'm not, I'm not one to disrespect any fighters, and, but I am also trying to be more outspoken and, and honest with myself when I answer questions. And so I didn't mean it as a disrespect. I meant it just as an honest answer coming from somebody that's been doing martial arts for 20 years, fighting professionally for 10 years, and I know that she just hasn't. And you said you didn't want to force anything, but I would think that you know you looked so good tonight, and it seems like you know you're in, you're in a good you're in the zone. I yeah. mean, you would want to fight again very soon. I mean that. You yeah, saying that that doesn't exist at all for you, or it does. It, you know, it, it's whatever, whatever they give to me. I, I'm fresh, and so um, I'm ready to get back in there. Is there any particular matchup that you think makes sense <laughs> for you coming off of this win? No, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna enjoy it, uh, enjoy the victory, enjoy my family, enjoy the holidays, and um, you know, get back in the gym. I have other teammates that are getting ready for fights, so I, I want to be there for them because they were there for me for this whole <laughs> year and a half as as I, as I was trying to prepare. Uh, maybe I missed this a little bit earlier, but but did she meet up, meet with your expectations as far as what she actually showed in the cage? When, when you you said you know she's green, she doesn't have the experience, but what was she like in the cage? Was she less tough than you thought, or did she meet your expectations? I think that me switching to southpaw really threw her off guard, and she kind of, I think she looked at me and was like, hold up, that's not what we were getting ready for. And so it just kind of screwed with her head. And um, th and that was our game plan from the beginning, it was to just, you know, stop her momentum. And, and being able, and going southpaw did exactly that. Was getting to her back part of the game plan too? Did you think she was weak there with, mm -hmm. with her defense? No, you know, she's a great scrambler. Um, She's showed it in all her fights that she can scramble out of submissions. So we really worked hard um, on our jujitsu chain um, submissions with uh, Coach Barata and just making sure not to get frustrated uh, through her scrambles. And when she scrambles out of it, either getting a better position or scrambling into a new submission. Uh, and, and then if none of those worked, getting back up, like not wasting any time just in the neutral position. And did you feel her go unconscious? I did not. But, you know, that's how you know she's a fighter, because she wasn't going to tap. Does that give you a little bit more, like, respect for her, or that she didn't? I've always had respect for her, you know. Like, anybody that steps into the cage, and, and you know that they're getting ready to throw down with you, you need to have respect for. You're going to see Master Yaya again? <laughs> Master Yaya said, let her dance a little bit, and then finish. <laughs> so, I, so I listened. <laughs> All right, meanwhile, the co-main event, uh, a couple of prospects met there and uh, turned out to be pretty damn entertaining. Mickey Gall picking up the second-round submission over Sage Northcutt. Uh, cold coffee, I don't know about you, but uh, this fight, you know, we talked about it going in, the, all the question marks, and I did pick Sage Northcutt, and I, I kind of knew in the back of my head that Mickey Gall was probably the safer play, you know, with his big advantage in the ground game. I, I thought that was probably the smart one. But, uh, you know, I, I was looking for a little edge. I thought Sage Northcutt's experience might have it. I thought the fact that, uh, you know, this was kind of his first full-time training camp or what have you, I, I thought Sage might be it. Looked ugly early, man. Mickey Gall took this fight to the ground with just zero problems whatsoever. Um, but I thought Sage showed a, a, a little bit of uh, a little a bit of durability, you know, mm -hmm. fighting back. And then... Man, that second round started, and Sage came out striking. Man, he was looking yeah. good. Uh, hell, he, he was he was talking a little bit of trash. Uh, there was all kinds of crazy stuff going on in there. You know, he busted open Mickey Gall, but ultimately, uh, Mickey did get the fight to the floor again. Got on the back and got the submission win. Uh, but I tell you what, you know, I I, I really I. I I don't want to say that, like, because cause I see some people saying Sage doesn't even belong in the UFC. I do feel like he belongs in the UFC. I mean, there's nothing that I've ever seen about him that made me think, man, this guy is future champion, future Hall of Famer, or whatever. But 
Dude, he's fun to watch. He's he's one of the most interesting dudes you'll ever meet. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I I walked away from this fight feeling good about both guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, on the other hand, did pick Gall to win. Just just throwing that out there. Just I didn't see your picks there. anyway. Oh, okay. Well, I did. I think I even said so in our <laughs> you episode. Did. I'm just joking. <laughs> I just I'm just busting your balls because I, I think that in the 2017 picks, yeah. uh, our staff picks on the MMA Junkie. I, should I, get I believe in cold coffee should be on there. I should get in there, even and if even if I pull pull the lower ranks, I should get in there. I think I you should, should be on there. there. I should, but regardless, jumping uh, back to this, <laughs> I thought it was a, I thought it was great. I mean, what I love that, what really stands out in my head, uh, even though, like you said, you know, it, he took it down easy, but I think that's just the fact that Gall's got some slick little things. You know, when he was able to grab it. You know, he he's working the trips really well, and I think he just he does. was controlling when he got the hold of the leg. I mean, same thing when when uh, Derek the Black Beast throws that leg up there and somebody grabs a hold of it, you get you get you uh. get that chance to just take him down. You know, even though you're like, ah, why are you doing that? But what I loved and I thought was awesome was when you started seeing these two go starting to jaw at each yeah. other, and in the second round, Sage came out and was Johnny Moore, but had this swagger, and they had this movement that I don't remember him doing before. Like, you Dude. could tell they were really having fun, almost like I thought he was going to start doing some capoeiro shit or something. Yeah. And he started just doing this way, and I was like, holy cow. Kind of switching stances yeah, I was and like, moving side to side. I could tell he was having fun, and he was like – smiling about it and i was like then i was starting to think like because in the beginning i was like oh all right i was so right gall's gonna get this but then when i started seeing that out of uh, of sage in the second i was like wait a second yeah now he's having fun and you could see the weapons and he was flowing really good i was like oh shit you know he might catch mickey now because he was he was just showing some like bruce lee type shit you know i was i was waiting for him to just start you know if you ever seen the movie The Last Dragon? Sure. You know, he, I Classic. thought he was going to start doing like the glow thing. You know, when you got that glow, every or something like that, whatever <laughs> that song is. But um, I was like, oh shit. And then I started thinking, like, oh, he's going Super Saiyan because his hair seemed to be more yeah. highlighted at that point. Yep. But uh, uh, I was, he, he definitely has a place in the fact that one, he brings a lot of eyeballs to the sport. And two, the dude is talented. I mean, he's got six striking. Um, I know people want to say shit about his his ground game and whatever. People said the same thing about Ronda. Said that she was a one trick pony until she started getting her hands and started doing some things with that. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think you know, love him or hate him. I mean, one he's probably one of the nicest, most polite people in the sport. That's it's insane. That's the kind of guy you want representing the sport. This is the kind of guy you could send out, and he will convert. You know a lot of non-believers and haters in the sport just because they're going to see this guy and think like, wow, if everybody in the sport is like this, I want my daughter to marry every one of them. You know I mean? Like he's such a a perfect spokesman for in that sense. And uh, he's super talented. I mean, his his physique is amazing. And uh, he's, he's got so many years left for him to keep growing. And he's already striking at such a high level that when everything else keeps going, I mean, Give this kid another couple years of battles like this at the top level. He's going to be a monster. And uh, Would you call him the Karate Hottie? I, I'll do that right now. Let's just swap it. <laughs> we'll call him the Karate Hottie. She can be and Super we'll, Michelle Watterson? S- Michelle Super Watterson. <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> Super Master Yaya. Yeah, I, I hope she doesn't go like uh, don't Michelle talk about Master Yaya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Master Yaya Watterson. Oh. <laughs> that was some uncomfortable shit. I'm it not was. gonna lie. That, that was like that was very, very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. No, all right. So um yeah. I think Station North Cup belongs in the UFC. I think he's entertaining. Uh and I think he has some skill. And you're right, man. It, because it was funny. I, I thought right away I'm like, Mickey Gall's gonna smoke him. I'm like, I made the worst pick ever. Like, what was that the yeah. hell was I thinking? And then he showed some character in the second. I'm like, Oh yeah. I was right. Here we go, here we go. Yep. And then Mickey got it. So uh good stuff all the way around, man. Well, I you know, well, th- these two guys could fight again somewhere down the future. Well, I hope too that people now I mean, because a lot of people were saying and you know, who's Mickey fought? You know, and a lot of people might even now mm-hmm. still just the haters are gonna be like, Oh, we well, fought a guy at Sage, he was overhyped anyways, he's whatever, whatever. But when you see this kid, I mean, he wasn't afraid to stand and bang with mm-hmm. Sage as well. He took some shots, but he also gave some shots. And, I mean, his submission game. I mean, when he finally got a hold of Sage and got on the ground, 
he's slick how he moves around. Super I mean, slick. like, people got to get over the fact that well, now he's 3-0, and but, like, th- this kid is – he's going to do something. I mean, I, I believe that if he keeps going this path and he's and he's picking it how it is right now, in a couple years' time, I mean, or even, like, a year's time, um, I love that how he said, like, if it goes lightweight – but he's humble enough and he's smart enough. You can kind of see almost the vision. He's like, give me two years. He's like, I'll own that division or whatever. He's not saying, I'm going to go down right now and, and take it over or whatever. But he's talking the right things. Yeah. But I think I think we're going to see some really good things. And I hopefully people now won't keep won't push as much doubt as they have been. Because it's going to be hard for them to say, well, he's just fought a journalist and he's fought a pro wrestler making his debut. But now he's fought a guy – literally that has you know taekwondo accolades or whatever out of the yin yang and all the other shit karate or whatever i'm not sure if it was what the exact discipline but um he's got somebody now and he's gonna get some more and fuck i would put him i'd think he'd smoke hardy if hardy came out right now I unfortunately but I mean, Hardy's been out of the game for a while. Hardy's are yeah, a that's little no, long that's... in the tooth, yeah. you know. <laughs> not short in the tooth, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, that's, I don't know. and that's not no, and that's not a, uh, a swipe at Dan Hardy. No, I mean, not at all. I, I think we both like Dan Hardy as a person, like him as a fighter. For but sure, dude, you don't walk in off you know years of layoff. I think I mean he's yeah. he's, he's nearing five years or whatever. I mean, it's been right. a, a while. It's been a while, and. Is it that long? It's going to no, be it four years. Long. Four years, right? Or no, like gonna three. Piss me off. Well, let's see, because I was I've been gone for. I remember when Lytle and Hardy fought. No, was, I'm right. It was September 2012. When so, Hardy well, last okay. fought. Yeah, so I so I say nearing five years. It's been four years and three months. So yeah. not nearing five years, but over wow. four years. That's you don't crazy. you don't walk in from that type of layoff. And, and yeah. keep up with a, a young kid, you know, with that type of pace and that type yeah. of move. That's that's uh that would be tough. Yeah. But I will say that was kind of a weird call out because I don't even think Dan. I don't think Dan's even medically cleared right now. Yeah. He's still got the heart condition. Um, there's still concerns, and I don't think he's medically cleared. So yeah. I thought that was kind of a bizarre. Well, props to him. I mean, kids throwing out softballs, man. He's like, we'll see what happens. You know, here, here's one. Might as let me well. Call, let me call a big name because I mean. That would be the that would be the biggest name to date, of course, that he's beaten outside of celebrity name, you know, and CM Punk. But um, yeah, well, fuck it, doesn't hurt to ask, you know. Doesn't hurt to ask. All right, let's hear from uh, Mickey Gall, who, by the way, with all this other stuff we're saying, is pretty damn good on the mic as well for such a young kid. What was he saying in there? Um, I'll tell you this first. I had been, you know, I I you know wanted to play the bad guy a little bit for this. I was like, there's no way you'd be the nice guy with Sage. And, uh, you know, I want to talk, maybe get him to engage in me a little bit. And maybe make him step out of his character and, you know, talk some crap, maybe. And he didn't the whole time. I'm like, ah, oh, he's just such a sweet kid and he's not going to do it. But it came out in the fight. And, you know, it's all the fight went down. And I, I think that helped me. And uh, so what he said was, he's, when uh, he stood up out of my guard, he was like, um, he was like, get up, get up. And he was like standing right over me. I was like, no, why don't you come down? I thought your jitsu was better than mine because he said that in the show. Um, and then I got up, I was like, what, are you tired? He's like, no, nah, I never get tired. Um, I, I gotta say, I like Sage with an edge. And then when he, when he, he you know, he blacked my eye and he, he cut me. Um, and he was like, ooh, that looks good. Like, he was, he was talking some crap. I, you know, uh, I like, I, I like, I like that. I like that he, you know, came out a little bit. Um, this cut, though, I had, you know, I lied to everyone. I cut this three weeks before the CM Punk fight. I got 21 stitches in this eye. Uh, I, I didn't want to tell anyone that. But uh, yeah, and he opened it right back up. So only I only got only got eight stitches now. Talk about the uh, the call out of Dan Hardy, where that came from. You've uh, kind of you know masterfully handled your career thus far. Where did that one come from? Um, you know, I, I'm just I gotta punch up. You know what I mean? I want to take out guys who have bigger names than me, who have bit more star power. Big names make nice trophies, and I, I want some nice trophies. You know, so you know I call called out CM Punk, called out Sage. I plan on going down to 155, uh, making 70 is pretty easy. 55 would be tough, but I, I think I'll be the champion there. I, I like the way, you know, Connor went down to 45 and suffered and, went, you know, and made that. And he made himself a champion, made himself a star. You know, I, I, and I think I can do the same thing. I think, I think I'll be the champ at 55 in a couple years. 
Mickey, can you talk about just the level of, uh, I guess, satisfaction that you have tonight compared to maybe your first two UFC fights? Is it completely different? Is it comparable? What would you say? I feel, yeah, I feel much more, much better. You know, it was more of a fight. It wasn't a total domination. Um, I, you know, uh, I got my eyes blackened. You know, Sage is a tough kid, and Sage is a UFC caliber guy. You know, uh, he's a step up in competition. So yeah, I, I feel, you know, I do feel like I accomplished something more. I want you to kind of comment on something you just said because it seems like already, you know, on social media, people are, some people do think that Sage is not UFC caliber, you know, so to anybody who still thinks that maybe, like what would you say, though? oh, Mickey hasn't beaten a UFC caliber guy yet? That's cool, you know, he, he was 3-1 in the UFC, but I, you know, I, I can't be concer concerned with other people's opinions. If they think that, that's cool, and then I'm, when I win the next one against another UFC caliber guy, then we'll see what they're saying then. You know, I, that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to prove people wrong and, you know, show, show what I'm about, show what I can do. Yep. I, I kind of want to follow up on, on, the, on the whole Hardy thing. Um, do, you, do you know something we don't as, a, as far as his condition and, and if he's cleared to fight? Is, uh, is that, are you just going based on the fact that he said he wants to come back or do you have any more intel than that? Um, yeah, I, I did some Googling and, uh, you know, I... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he said he wants to come back. He, he said he wants to come back, said he wants, you know, uh, he wants a marquee fight. I think he'd look at me and think, oh, that's, that's a nice fight for me. I think maybe he'll, he'll take that bait. Um, but for real, I'm a big fan of his, and it, it'd be an honor to fight him. I, I'd love that. And that's, a, that's another, he's, you know, he's a bigger UFC star than me. So, I, you know, I just, like I said, big names make nice trophies. I wanna keep, I'm going to keep punching up. I'm not going to call out some guy that no one knows, you know what I mean? I, I got to say big names. I'm tossing up a Hail Mary. Again, like I did with the CM Punk, if it doesn't happen, that's okay. If it does, that'd be great. I'd, I'd, I'd love that. I'd love to see him back. I'd love, I'd love to see Dan Hardy come back and fight anyone. I'd definitely like to see him fight me. He didn't tag you on this, but I think he might have been referring to you. I heard. Oh, was he old enough to watch the UFC when I was still fighting? Yeah, I actually, the first UFC I ever went to was him versus GSP for the title in Jersey. That was the first uh, UFC I ever went to. So you remember, <laughs> that's, that's a memory. Yeah, I saw Dan Hardy fight a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are there any other names that you're thinking about if you look at 155 or 170 just because there's a chance that Dan may not be able to get cleared? Um, you know, I know he's had problems getting cleared before, so, you know, because of the heart issue. Yeah, I, I'd like to go down, you know. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel, like I said, I, I like the way, I, I, I admire the way Connor did that, you know, suffer. And I, I, I want to be the best in a weight class. I think set, I'm a little young in the tooth, 70s steep. Um, I, I, but I think, you know, one, like I said, 155, I, I'll have that belt in a couple of years. No names really, man, whoever. I, I want, I, you know, I want to be, I got into this to be the best in the world. So whoever, you know, whoever, whoever, whenever, whatever. What do you think as far as like the 155 guys? I mean, it's not necessarily to fight, but just kind of like your evaluation of whether it's Connor or Ferguson or Khabib, you know, what do you think of those different guys? They're, they're fantastic. They're wonderful. They're awesome fighters, world-class, some, you know, best in the world. Um, you know, so I, yeah, I, I just, yeah, you know, they're, I think they're all great. Um, and, you know, I think I'd be, I'd be huge for that weight class. And, you know, I, I, yeah, I just, I think I'd, I think I'd dominate in that weight class. Any questions? Anything else? None, Randy? Cool. Well, I guess to follow up on the 155, um, sure. you know, you said you were going to, you kind of meant, um, made it sound like it was going to be a difficult cut for you, that you, know, you watched Connor suffer down. It's going to be similar for you. I mean, how confident are you that you can even make it? I think I make it. I do. Um, I, just, I, just be, I just have a strict diet to make 70. I, I, I can make 70 standing on my head. Um, you know, it's 15 pounds. It, I, an ideal spot would be like a 60, 65. So, may, you know, if, if uh, the UFC doesn't seem to be too keen on doing catch weights, but I'd be extremely open to one. I'd love that. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, I can make it. I can do it. And then, of course, in our uh, third fight from the top, which, to, I mean, to be honest, in a lot of ways felt like the main event. It was certainly the main event for the local media. Uriah Faber did uh, pick up the unanimous decision win over Brad Pickett in what, at least for now, is the last fight of his career. The California kid says he's he's calling it quits. It felt like um, It felt like the prevailing 
mood in the press room tonight was that he's going to come back and fight again at some yeah. point. I, I believe that damn near everybody in there believes it. I I could see him not coming back only because he does have a lot of other options on the table with businesses True. and things like that. And I don't think he's in need of money. You know, he said it. He's not set for life. He does have to continue to make money. But he has businesses that seem to be doing pretty well. And I don't think he has to fight um, to, to, to continue to support himself. And yeah. He wants to build a team or whatever. But at the same time, he showed it tonight. Brad Pickett, uh, who, of course, may be on his way out as well, but is certainly an established veteran, is certainly uh, a dangerous uh, fighter on the other side of the cage. And Uriah looked phenomenal. Damn near finished him in the first round. And, you know, I, I don't know that I would pick Uriah against Dominic Cruz right now. I don't know that if for some reason Uriah and Cody Garbrandt weren't teammates, that, you know, if they were, if they had to fight each other in this video game world or whatever, that I would pick them against Cody Garbrandt. You know, I don't know that... But, I mean, dude, at worst, you know, Uriah is still at this stage in his career like a top 10 guy at worst. Sure. And I thought he looked I thought he looked phenomenal tonight. I, I really did. Kudos to Brad Pickett. Um, I will say this. John McCarthy was right on top of it, man. He was paying a lot of attention to it and uh, didn't stop the fight. And I think Brad probably showed by the fact that he continued on for two rounds that it was the right call not to, yeah. not to stop the fight. But uh, overall, man, just – Uriah did did what he what he came to do. I think a first round finish would have would have probably sent that crowd into a frenzy. But uh, I don't think it was a boring fight by any stretch of the imagination. Imagination. I don't think that they uh, weren't entertained. And of course, you had a uh, former basketball great, uh, you know, turned mayor Kevin Johnson, who was court, uh, you know courtside, cage side, <laughs> uh, cheering until the very end. And uh, it was a cool scene, man. You know, maybe he'll come back. But if he never comes back, if this is it. Well, it was a f freaking beautiful way to do it at the brand new arena in Sacramento in front of his hometown. It was cool. Yeah. When he took that back at one point, I was like, oh, we're going to we're going to see that Uriah choke or whatever. You know, the only thing I think uh, that if it seemed to me like it was going to be the last time I thought I would, even though he mentioned it a little bit, I thought I would have saw more emotion. I agree. It looked like. He was so okay with it, which maybe he is just okay, you know, really walking away or whatever. But he did mention at one point, think in the back when they were playing the little highlight video, um, <laughs> he, he was like, I had to kind of turn away because I w it was getting him choked up or whatever. And I could see that, but I could see you getting choked up regardless if it was your last fight or even not, you know, just having that play out there for him. But when uh, he's talking and even during the week when we asked him about it, there was just it, – it just seemed to me like I wasn't getting the emotion that I think I would get if a guy was really walking away from the sport. You know, it seemed to me like it was a walking away for the sport for now mm -hmm. kind of thing. I see uh, what you're saying. Uh, so, I don't know if if that's a sign of anything. I mean, I'm a pretty good character read a lot of times of guys, and and I think you can you could see if, if a guy had put as much – heart and effort in it as he has, I think he would have been broken up a little bit more about finally walking away. I kind away. of agree with you, man. I kind of agree with you. Like, um, I bought it in the pre-fight buildup where it's like, listen, I yeah. can't let myself get caught up in this right now. I got a guy that's trying to take my head off. I got all that. And I'm like, all right, I see where you're standing with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're right. He hasn't wanted to get sentimental at all. He hasn't, you know, it's, it's always been about, you know, practical discussion. And even I think, you know, I kind of asked him, at the post fight press conference, you know, like, what what happens next? Like, what's the next move? And and I really meant like, what happens tomorrow? What happens Monday? Like, do you go, man? I'm gonna like eat some ice cream and get fat for a second, and you know what I mean? Like, not to worry, you know. And he's just like, well, I'm gonna move on to this phase and that business and that. And I think that's the way Uriah thinks. But I kind of see what you're getting at there, man. Like, there was never the sentimentality at all, where you're just like. Dude, I had to soak it in and, like, yeah. you know, man, like, to think about all that I've accomplished and, and all that yeah. I've been through. You're right. I mean, he reminisced on when people asked him pointedly, like, you know, what are some of your favorite fights? Mm -hmm. And even then, you know, he would tell him, but it was more – it was more just reciting from memory. It wasn't like – I didn't feel like I was being brought into this end-all story and that rounded out with, you know, culminating and – deciding that it was finally time to just walk away or whatever. It was just 
it was kind of flat, you know. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my theater degree from the Ohio <laughs> State University. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. I got, <laughs> I got some very nice jazz hands over here. That uh, maybe I just wasn't buying his buy, wasn't buying the uh, the role. No, I agree. I I, I I kind of I kind of see what you're getting at. Like it wouldn't shock me if he doesn't fight again, because I don't think he has to fight again. Yeah. But it definitely would not like if all of a sudden we're like, oh, Uriah's coming out of retirement. You'd be like, yeah, I kind of expected it. Yeah. And who knows? I mean, maybe at the right time, maybe just it's nice to get away from him a little bit. But I mean, like you said, he's still in top form. He could easily walk away from the sport from a year, stay in shape, and still be in the top 10, top 15 level probably. So 100%. All right. Well, he spoke to the, to the, uh, to the media, uh, the, a lot of local media as well as us, the, the traveling national media, for about 20 minutes. So if you want to see that whole thing, uh, check out the, the MMA Junkie YouTube page. we got the full discussion up there. And as we said, it was kind of funny because a lot of the local media, after he left, they pretty much bounced. <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah, Mickey Gall didn't get to speak to the uh, local media. Michelle Watterson did not get to speak to the local <laughs> media. Uh, <laughs> Uriah had come and gone, and that was that. Uh, the main card kicked off with Alan Choban. Uh, picking up a uh, decision win over Mike Perry. Uh, Allen, I thought, just fought a brilliant fight, man. Tech, uh, very technical, very disciplined, stuck to his game plan. Um, you know, he knew what he was dealing with with Mike Perry, a guy that had a ton of power, a guy that if you stand in front of and you brawl with, uh, is probably going to make you wish you hadn't done that. And, uh, man, this this fight... You know, we talked to both guys earlier in the week. Hopefully, everybody got a chance to check out those interviews. Um, Alan, again, a guy that I've known since you know he was in the amateur career, and it's been fun watching him uh, kind of grow up through the ranks. Meanwhile, Mike Perry, platinum Mike Perry, I I I, 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 I dig his intensity, man. He's a different dude. Yeah, he's a different dude. Uh, but I, overall, man. Um, I thought this was just a, a fantastic performance by Alan Joban, and uh, yeah, I, I think this will be, you know, maybe one of those lesson learning type fights for Mike Perry. Certainly, it certainly can. If, but he's the kind of guy I think he really believes what he says, and this is the guy that's like, you know, I don't need to make friends. I'm here to to win. I'm here to to move up the ranks and become whatever. And I think he's the kind of guy that. He needs to have a little hatred against his yes. opponent. You know, we've seen guys that don't need that, and we have seen definitely have seen some that do, and I think he falls in that category where he needs to kind of have a little animosity kind of keep him moving forward. I'm not sure if that's from where he's from, you know, being a lot of fights that, you know. I think so. That's the sort of thing that just kept him going then and got him into fighting in the first place. And uh, But, yeah, I, I certainly hope so. I think if anything else uh, – He'll realize that you know, there's a, a you know, because I think he discounted a lot of things about Joban. He yeah. wasn't even didn't think he had the power, didn't think he had the striking. Thought he was just going to pretty much run through him, and he did make contact. He a touched him times. up a couple of he, times. He certainly like, did. Uh -oh. He certainly did. He certainly did. But he Allen also weathered a, a couple of them, where I think that probably you know maybe got Mike thinking a little bit. Um, coming in but he he tagged mike a couple times that really kind of sent him straight and then he kind of slowed down i think it surprised him because i think that doubt crept into him a little bit and that eventually played in allen's favor but um i i think it could be a definitely a, a, a good learning experience but i mean the dude's a stud i mean he's got a lot of power he's got a lot of talent um i think if anything else i mean you know i, I would love to see um you know, him be more cordial to some of the other guys. Even guys, I mean, we're hearing stories that even other fighters that he wasn't even fighting against, you know, he was finding ways to just kind of have beef with them during right. the week. And I'm just like, I mean, it's good if if that's what you need to get yourself amped up against your opponent. But, I mean, do you just not want to be friends with anybody? I mean. Well, I think him and obviously his, his boy Alex Nicholson as well. I mean. I, I I enjoy talking to them just because it's 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 interesting to kind of pick up pick them apart a little bit and kind of try to learn what's inside their head. But you're right, you know it's kind of funny because like Mike Perry came out at the beginning of that fight and he he bows to all four corners, you know, like a like a martial artist, you know. And I don't mean to say this in in a rude way because he is a martial artist. I mean, obviously he trains and he knows what he's doing. But like, I mean, he's just a fighter. You know what I mean? Like, there's some people that are athletes. There's some people that are fighters. Yeah. I mean, like. 
that's a dude I wouldn't want to run into on the street. You know what I'm saying? Like he, you know, he's not. I, I think of him as more of a brawler, a fighter than a sportsman yeah. or whatever. And it is weird. I mean, and I guess it, it's uh, well as you said. I mean, we have heard some stories that this week here in Sacramento, you know, there were some other fighters on the car that were like, "Who's this dude punking me when I'm not even fighting him or whatever?" Yeah. But um, I, Allen, uh, when he came back and talked to you guys in the back after the win. He was pretty fired up, right? Like he yeah, was like he was, this this I don't like this guy. Well, and I mean he he did say that it was squashed, it's done or at least in his mind like it's done after the fact, but um he felt very very disrespected and he was he was he was a little frustrated that he didn't get a chance to sort of say that on a bigger a bigger you know, avenue than just us reporters in Bro, the back or MMA whatever. MMA junkie? What are you talking I know, about? I mean, right? it, sure, you could have said it on Fox, but, bro, it's it going to be on MMA Junkie's YouTube I mean, channel. I think especially with him, I mean, like, especially when Mike took it so far. I mean, he put it out there on the, the Twitter, and you're throwing it out over the webs. So it's like, all right, you put it out in front of this huge audience, and now I want to have my piece mm-hmm. to say my part and a huge audience, and then they didn't give him that chance. So he's like, well, fuck. I just want to <laughs> say something. So – I mean, because he pretty much he, he was saying in the back, you know, he he had told himself, um, his kid. I even asked him like, "Dad, why did you try to kick that man or whatever?" And he said about, "Hey, you know, well, he's, oh, at the, he's at the way at the in, way or in. yeah." He's like, "You know, well, he's a bully, and you can't let bullies win." You know, where I thought he in one aspect he would say, oh, wow. "Wow, he let I kind of lost my cool." Sorry, you know. Sorry, son or daughter. I can't remember if he said it was son or daughter or whatever. But no, he's got a little boy. Um. Uh, you know, instead of saying I kind of lost my cool, it was just like it was about, you know, this guy's a bully. I don't like bullies, and this is what you do to bullies. You take care of bullies. And uh, and he was kind of hoping that he would, if anything, learn from that to be more modest and humble and respectful of the other martial artists that are around you or whatever. Wow. Um, but he said it was done, and, and, and I, I meant to ask Alan about it, but we had already kind of run a little bit long. He did, though, when they came sort of together at the end, they were done. It was the the slightest and smallest of little bows, but Mike did bow towards him. I didn't catch you that. You know, wow. at the very end, Alan, you know, you'll see his hands go to the side, and he he does the little head knob, so they bowed, sort of bowed back a little bit. And I think in his book, that was enough. He's done. Like, the fight's done. I think, you know, same thing with at the end of Benavidez and Cejudo. Once they were finally done, like, after all this shit, we're done. I don't have to see you. You don't have to see me. Let's... <laughs> Let's walk away. So I think he's glad that that's over. Um, but he did say that, you know, it's fine. I mean, I don't think he's going to look up Mike to hang out anytime soon. But I don't see anything more, from, at least coming from Allen's side, um, chirping back. Now, after watching the interview today and some of the stuff that he said, Mike might feel like continuing <laughs> to chirp a little bit um, because he might not like the fact that, you know, Alan went on there and said that he thought he was being disrespectful and blah, blah, blah. But um, who knows? Um, but it was great. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good interview. We put the full interview up there online so people can do it. And then I cut down a few, another one of just a couple other little stuff. But um, he was very animated and he was, uh, you know, he and he's and, and the thing that was nice, too. And I guess he was also he was frustrated because he feels like he's done enough that he should be getting these top 15, top 10 dudes, you know, he's got a little string, you know, running together. And, uh, so we got him to kind of chirp a little bit and it was funny because he was trying to talk about, you know, I definitely want a guys in like the top 10, top 15, whatever, or, you know, here you got Sage, you got Mickey. These guys are co-headlining this card. He's like, I'll take that winner. You know, I'll take whoever, you know, like if that's what it takes, you know, he's like, I don't like the fact that I got to talk more to do whatever right. but you know if that's what works or whatever you know i think he pretty much alluded to the fact that he's not gonna he's not gonna take it to the degree of like what mike did or do whatever and right become disrespectful just for the the sake of of to get a, a noticed and to, to get a fight because he believes a veteran and that's below what he's trying to do he's still he's a martial artist and i think he sure. buys into the i think he does the respect too. and the honesty and the you know and being respectful and all that other kind of stuff that he won't, he doesn't want to go down that path, but he's also realizes that you got to start chirping, you know, the, you do. the, the, the squeaky wheel will get, get that grease or whatever. So, um, it should be interesting to see if he, if he steps up his game and starts really speaking out about it. But that was another thing he was hoping to say on the mic too. So 
They would have got a mouthful, though, if they, if they would have put him on. <laughs> but it was kind of nice because he was like, all right, well, they didn't give me a chance. So here, I'm just going to give it all to you guys. So here you go. That's so, fantastic. So, yeah, check check back on that interview. Look MMA online. Junkie YouTube, you can check that out. We'll have the cut down on MMA Junkie as well. So, uh, yeah, check it all out because it, it was kind of fun to watch some of that unfold. And uh, I am interested to see where Mike Perry comes from, goes from here. You know what I mean? Uh his first loss, we'll see what he does. All right, uh, just kind of run through the prelims real quick. Paul Craig did pick up a submission win over Henrique De Silva, Frankenstein. Dude's a teacher. Yeah, Paul Craig's a teacher. I did not know that. And you know what's interesting? The, th- well, the one thing I took away from that at the end, um, when he wants to, he wants to, of course, all of them want to be champions. They all want to want to win. And I asked him, I said, if you know you start winning, you get everything you want. I was like, will you walk away from being a teacher or, or you don't do you not want to walk? And he said, I'll always be a teacher. He's like, I'm a teacher first and foremost. He's like, I wake up every day and I feel so happy and glad that I can go in there and change these lives and like That's do awesome. it. And I'm just like, wow. I'm like, and it's funny because uh, I was like, I bet your 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 students are pretty like intimidated. They they stay in line. He's like. No, half the time they they don't care about that stuff. You know, they <laughs> they'd rather take a selfie with me and think we're best buds or whatever. And they're like, somebody's like, give me, can you, you gotta give me a shout out. You gotta give me a shout out. And he's like, I can't give all you guys shout outs or whatever. He's like, or I'd be like reading the the class roster up here or something. But he had a great sense of humor. And it's funny because at first I didn't understand. It took me a second to really kind of get the accent down. Cut through the Scottish accent, you know. There. But after that, then it was like it was fine. Once you don't fight it and try to, you know, not pay attention to it, it just kind of it's easy. You can understand it. But I thought that was just amazing. That even if he can get it to the point where he's fighting full time and doesn't have to teach, he wants to keep teaching. So I think that's pretty. Um, I just think that's wonderful for him to to, to want to cool. do that. So. Uh, Kudos to him. The Scottish accent is tough, man. Uh, it is. Robert it's Whiteford, thick. I have trouble understanding him. And God bless if you're at the uh, at the at the at the pub, and uh, you're hanging out with a couple of yeah. Scottish blokes that have had a few cocktails because it gets really really tough there. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. All right, uh, Mizuto Harota picked up a unanimous decision win over Cole Miller. Um, we talked about it going in. I, I didn't talk to Cole Miller this week. I wanted to talk to him afterwards, just kind of see where his head was at. Um, and and to be honest, I thought this was a fight that he could win, and a fight that I I kind of you know hoped hoped he would win in a lot of ways, just knowing kind of the the pain and the emotion that he's going through. But uh, just looked flat, to be honest with you. I mean, that interview that he did with Dave Mandel, um, where he admitted that he didn't want to be at practice, he was struggling to maintain focus, wasn't sure how he felt about fighting. Uh, Tonight, he looked like a person that felt all that way. I was hoping he could put all that aside and, and, and maybe he turn it into like a, a, a motivation or something like that, but just looked flat. It was kind of bummed for him. Yeah. I only got to watch a little bit of that uh, fight, but when I did, yeah, it wasn't going Cole's way. So, yeah, I felt real bad for him. Um, but you're right. The one day we saw him, I, it, uh, I don't think that – it wasn't looking like he was having a, a hard weight issue, even though I'm sure, you know, that's it's always tough. To yeah, I bet that's never a good cut for him. Yeah, but, um, yeah, for the parts that I saw, he was definitely kind of not having his way. Yeah, he told you us, know? like you said, when we ran into him, he told us he had his head straight and he told us he was in the right place, but uh, he just, just didn't look great tonight. Yeah, just, and, he, and and I think off nights just happen, and it might not have been anything with his head or whatever. Sometimes, I mean, I think you can go in there with the best intentions and – Shit just doesn't click. So it just could be as simple as that. Just things just didn't work for him. But uh, rough night, rough night, rough night. But he'll he'll be back. I hope, but who knows? I do too. Colby Covington picked up a uh, decision win over Brian Barberina. Colby Covington dominated this fight in terms of wrestling. Uh, Colby's a guy that we spent a lot of time talking to over the years and, and watched him develop. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a wrestler, and, and he wants to continue to develop as a martial artist. And he did show some good striking at times. Um, did get some boos along the way as well. There were just so many takedowns. It was such a heavy takedown-oriented offense. Uh, Brian Barberina, of course, we spent uh, a little bit of time hanging out with him at the airport on the way here. And then, and then uh, it was you know, we, we talked to him earlier in the week, and you know he was coming off a long layoff and looking for a big win. But Colby Covington just dominated here. And then, actually uh, – told me as he walked by press row um, that he had actually torn his MCL about four weeks ago and has not been able to practice for four weeks. 
um, was getting uh, PRP, I believe, the uh, platelet rich. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, getting that treatment. Very technical. Yeah, yeah you know, this uh, platelet. Uh, uh, yeah, getting that done. Uh, so he's really just, you know, been recovering and, and didn't want to pull out of the fight or anything like that, which is interesting uh, because the one fight he lost uh, to Wardley Alvis, uh, he entered that fight with an injury as well and then swore that he was never going to enter a fight with an injury again and then entered the damn fight with the injury. Anyway. But, but he won, dominated. Uh, told you guys that he. That he wasn't really happy about it, right? That uh, he, he wasn't uh, he wasn't necessarily thrilled with this performance, yeah, even as dominant as it was. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled with his performance, and I always respect that when guys do it. I think Derek beat, went a little bit overboard last time, and he oh, wasn't. Shit. I think sometimes when he goes <laughs> when he goes that bad, I'm like, bro, you're gonna talk yourself out of a fight, man. Yeah, right. Like, but, don't trash uh, yourself. But it's it's always good when the guys you know are able to realize it. You know, I mean, they they go in there, they train for the knockout. I guarantee none of them go in there work their butts off that hard and train for a decision. Right. Um, so, yeah, he was just venting some frustration. He wanted it, really thought he had the skills capable of doing it, and just uh, just wasn't able to put it together, you know. But, yeah, he was he was voicing his frustration. and, and uh, um, But still, you know, and, and here we are as media sometimes, right? I'm like, but, you know, you, there's got to be some good. Like, feel like, you know, we're acting like therapists. Like, <laughs> come on, bro. You know you did some good, though, right? You know, um, but – you know, that, I think it's great. When, I can I commend the guys when they go in there and, uh, you know, are already ready to. They could they could be like, oh, well, I still won. I'm the best. I'm the best. But to come back and say, you know, shit didn't. I didn't do what I was supposed to do here. I didn't do what I was supposed to do here. You know, let me go back to the drawing board and figure out what's going on. Because you know that's a that's a point of growth at that point. You know, so I'm sure we'll be back and uh, you know back and. Uh, you know, kicking some more ass here soon. No doubt. All right, Alex Morona picked up a decision win over James Mutazri. Uh James Mutazri uh, was winning this fight early, looked good, um, and then just faded. And Alex Morono, to his credit, um, was gritty, was uh, hardworking, got in there, you know, and just outworked him over the final 10 minutes. If you were watching the uh, live and official weigh-in stream on uh, on Friday, uh, you remember that James Mutazri was uh, – was the one that struggled to make weight. We sat there and watched yeah. them. You know, they, they, we, we could see uh, into the fighter locker room area a little bit, and you could see that uh, he was kind of hanging his head. Uh, apparently was ready to just give up and say to hell with it. Um, I'll take whatever weight I get. I'll give the 20%. And his, his coaches were basically like, no, get your ass back in there. Lose <laughs> the rest of the weight. Uh, he did lose the rest of the weight. He made weight, um, but just faded. And uh, – I don't want to take anything away from Alex Morono, man. He was gritty. He was uh, the guy was focused and determined. Uh, but Mutazri is one of these guys that is so flashy and so you know uh, capable of great stuff. And, and uh, I think he's just you know coming in kind of out of shape or, or not necessarily out of shape, but uh, not on weight and having that extra tough weight cut. I think it really cost him over time. Uh, Josh Emmett. Picked up a decision win over Scott Holt, Scott Holtzman. Excuse me. Um, hard fought fight here too, man. These two dudes went at it. I thought this was a, a fight of the night candidate, to be honest with you. Uh, the one that did win it, of course, was Leslie Smith versus Serena Aldana, which we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, hard fought fight here between these two dudes. They went at it back and forth. Emmett, man, this dude, a team alpha male product. He definitely had the the crowd on his side. Uh, this guy has been in a couple of wild fights, man. Uh, just two fights into his UFC career. Of course, he picked up uh, the win over John Tuck in uh, Rotterdam earlier this year where he broke his hand to kind of hang on for dear life. Uh, here, uh, he was gassed, man. There was no doubt about it. He was gassed. Scott Holtzman was putting the pressure on him, and uh, Emmett found a way to, to get a couple of key takedowns and to strike at the right times. And uh, – Picked up a big, big win. This was a this was a fun fight, man. It really was. And uh, of course, we again talked to <laughs> spent some time with Scott Holtzman in the, at the airport the other day, set in first class with Mr. Hot Sauce, because you mm -hmm. know you know the MMA Roadshow rolls first class. Uh, you know on on short flights where we get upgraded. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but uh, I thought this was a fun fight for both guys. Really did. Uh, and of course, the uh, the Fox prelims kicked off with uh, Leslie Smith picking up a decision win over Rene Aldana. This fight was fun. It did get the fight of the night. Um, Aldana worked her jab. I mean, just her foot movement on point like she always does. But Leslie Smith, God bless her, if she didn't just bite down on her mouthpiece 
and just move forward and, and just throw from start to finish. I mean, the pace that she maintained from minute one to minute 15, never being afraid to walk through a strike, to, to, to give a strike, uh, just ballsy stuff, man. I mean, yeah. wow, can you say ballsy stuff for a women's fight? Of course you can. All right, cool. I'm, 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 She's assuming, in the back. That was, I'm assuming that was sexist somehow. Well, like, she was in the back talking about like feminism and stuff, and she kept saying like blossoming or, and she's like, after a while, she starts just laughing and she's like, that sounds like so anti, like, of like what you would think of like equal rights and whatever. It sounds so girly and she's like, these people just blossoming and then she start chuckling about it or whatever in the back she's a she's a fucking character but dude she got in like terminator mode at, at one point i think i even said that in the back because like you said she was willing to go through that punch but she just came forward and was just like jab 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 like a fucking just machine yeah coming forward and dude she rocked aldana and i thought it was gonna be over like quick but then yep. aldana showed a lot of heart and then to come back and do what she did, it's like after after the cobwebs cleared, and then she got back and remember like, oh yeah, I'm I'm pretty badass. Like let me come at you now, you know. And she rocked Leslie sometimes, and it was it was great. That was a very very exciting fight. I remember both both sides of the press room were just kind of like there were some people on the other side that were still eating or hanging out and kind of you know milling about. But once that fight started going, everybody just kind of stopped. We're just like <laughs> watching in place, you know. So that was that was really cool. Any any time a fight kind of causes everybody to kind of just stop what you're doing, because I mean, you know, a lot of times we got interviews and other stuff going. We're just oh, trying yeah. to trying to truck, just chug through the stuff, and uh, to kind of get to one of those points where you're like, all right, this is just wrong for me to miss this as this is happening because this is that good. And this was one of those fights where that happened tonight, where everybody just kind of said, "All right, I gotta watch this. This is good." It was, it was, dude. And it felt that way inside the building as well. People were, you know, still kind of filling up a little bit. You yeah. know, people are kind of milling about a little. Yeah. And and it felt like everybody just it got their attention. It was like, oh shit, the fight card's bad. on now. And you know what, man? I've 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 made it known before. I love watching Aldana fight, and I still do. Uh -huh. I think, man, her, as you said, man. She is a badass, and and she got rocked early on, but she's you know she's got that technical striking that's so fun to watch. But Leslie is just tough as nails, man. And yeah. uh, I thought it was cool that they got the fight of the night, even though I did feel that Emmett and Holtzman were were candidates as well. I thought it was cool because you know there was a lot of rumblings after Toronto where Cowboy didn't get a bonus, and um, you know a lot of people were saying was that politically motivated because he's kind of involved in this fighter union type talk. Leslie's been right at the forefront. Now, granted, yeah. part of a different organization. She's since backed away from that organization. Uh, you know, she she was in support of the PFA. Then she kind of has said that she's no longer necessarily in support of the PFA. Um, but she has been but very vocal about union too. talk. Yeah, she, she's like even she mentioned another one that you would crack up because it just made me think about how many MMAAAA whatever organizations. She's also part of a MMAF. A, that's right. That's right. You know, as well as like another one. Um, so even though maybe if the PFA isn't really her main thing or whatever, and they have some slight differences, she is so adamant about really making a change. And she's thought about it. And you could tell she's passionate about it because when somebody's passionate about it, you know, they just flow and you and you kind of get caught up in all the good stuff that they're saying. And there was a point when she was going on in the back and I was just like, wow, she really is passionate about this stuff. And, and, I did a cut down on the interview, but I also put the full uh, interview up on our YouTube page. So if you want to listen to what Leslie says about all the union talks and all this other stuff, um, it's there on the YouTube. And it was pretty extensive. Actually, the bulk of like the interview was most of that stuff. She actually even thanked Morocco for asking about sort of like an update on the union stuff. She's like, well, thank you very much for asking about that question and just – like she was just ready to open the faucet and just <laughs> spew the stuff that she hadn't had a chance to talk about for a while. So, um, yeah, it's 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 great. I mean, one, I thought she put on a great performance. Is that the first person to ever thank Stephen Morocco for a question? Has to be. <laughs> Has to be. Has to be. Poor, poor magnificent one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, 
but yeah, no, it was it, so it was good. It was good to hear her things. But yeah, I mean, literally, there's probably about uh, five minutes of conversation just speaking as to the unions and her thoughts on why things should be different, how they could be better, you know, and a little bit on the difference of some of the organizations out there. She actually talks a, a little bit about um, the PFA and what went on there, but also talked a little bit about the MMAA. And then she talked about these other groups, and I was just like, my Lord, how many groups are you part of? <laughs> um, but good for her. I mean, she believes in it. She's, she she knows that there's something that needs to be changed, and she's she's taking it on full, full, full head on, and she's becoming very educated about it. And that's why I think she's able to talk so well about it and so passionate about it. She that, studies it. You know, she's been studying and reading on it. I mean, uh, so good for her. Same thing I thought that with, like, Tim Kennedy, like, some people just get it, and they understand the ideas, and they understand the issues, and then they become well versed in it, and then they become the, the the perfect spokesperson for it. And she is definitely becoming one of those perfect spokespersons. We're gonna see it. it. You know what, man? It's gonna happen. Something's gonna yeah. happen. There's gonna be some type. It, it, it may not be this year. It may be next year. At least some year. It's gonna happen. We're gonna yeah. see it, and these people are gonna be the forefront. Of it. All right, the fight past prelims. Eddie Wineland picked up a TKO win over Tagei Mizugaki. Um, Old school WEC fight here in Sacramento. Um, Mizugaki looked good early on, to be honest with you, man. I thought he was actually outboxing Eddie Wineland. But once Eddie Wineland landed, it was lights out for Mizugaki. I, I saw some people um, complaining about the stoppage. I really had no problem with the stoppage here. Mizugaki was getting dropped. He was in trouble. It, it was not going very well for him, to be honest with you. And uh, I was fine with the stoppage. And um, at this point uh, – I'm not saying that Mizugaki needs to walk away, but he needs to take some time off. I think, man, his 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 chin is is gone, man. He's take he's taking some rough to, rough losses, and again, I thought he looked good here, man. I thought he was out striking Eddie Wineland on the feet, and uh, and then one good shot put you know put him down, and you know you think it was uh, you know four months ago where he got uh, his lights out uh, by Cody Garbrandt, so. Um, rough, rough little stretch from Mizugaki. I think Cruz has knocked him out. Yeah, it's he's taking he's taking some knockouts. I mean, and uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's I don't know. Maybe I, it's I, time for some Bellator action or something. I, I know. I never want to be the guy. He's 33 years old. He'll be. Uh, he just turned 33. I never want to tell somebody to walk away. But um, some rough losses, man. Some really rough losses. Uh, Hector Sandoval picked up a fantastic win over Freddie Serrano, man. I thought Sandoval looked great. Yeah. Of course, we talked to uh, Kid Alex earlier this week at Ultimate Fitness. It was awesome. We were at the, we were at the gym, a, a Uriah favorite gym, Ultimate Fitness, Team Alpha Male, and we had no idea that Hector was going to be there. And he kind of just walked up on us and started talking to us. We're like, well, shit, as long as you're here, let's just grab a few minutes on camera. Yeah. And uh, glad we did because uh, this was a, a phenomenal performance, man. He out-wrestled. Freddie Serrano, he looked good on the feet. Uh, you know, maybe maybe he trailed off a little bit at the end, but overall, man, I thought this was just a uh, scintillating performance, man. I thought it looked yeah. really good. Yeah, he was fun fun to watch, and it's <laughs> it's funny because how he talks and gets very amity. He speaks very very quickly, and it, he, yes, he it's does. Just like his fight style. I mean, he came out amped up and really charging in there. I thought both of them looked like they were ready to just go at it 110 percent right from the get go. Uh, but yeah, that was a fun fight, and uh, Hector. I mean, it's funny because it, he he reminds me of uh, like when well not reminds me, but he's like one of these fighters that now he's just starting to get the media. So he, he was a little bit more nervous at the beginning of when he was talking, a little quick answers. But then as we kind of loosened him up a little bit, his answers got longer and longer. He got more comfortable with us, like you know, like we're not going to throw you under the bus. You can you can say whatever. <laughs> so it was fun to. Fun to see that happen as well, and uh, it's so it's kind of neat to see like a, a fighter developing in some of those aspects right yep. in front of you and stuff because he's definitely got the fighting skills and he's getting that on point. So, uh, but no, it was a good fight, you know. And anybody that goes out of their way that you know during fight week, and it, we thought it was neat that he was there at the gym because mm -hmm. better than hanging out at his house doing nothing or whatever. Um, but to uh, Anybody that's going to give us some extra time of the day to do stuff, slightly biased. I'm like, I want you to do well, too. Right. And he did. So um, so good for him. You know, we got to uh, – so we'll just say that since he, he came and gave us an extra interview, that was the reason why he won. 
So any other <laughs> fighter wants to come give us some extra interviews, time. Come seek out the MMA Roadshow. We will almost guarantee your win. <laughs> almost. <laughs> We're almost those maybe. Were strong. I those know. Are almost maybe slightly, possibly guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first fight of the night, Salt and Aliyev uh, defeated Bojan Velikovic, or Boyan. I think, I can't remember how this is. Bohan. Bohan? I think it was Bohan. Bojan. I don't know. Mike Goldberg was, says shit like ten different ways well, anyway, yeah. so I don't. Don't uh, trust a fucking thing he says. <laughs> I love Goldie, but, man, he gets yeah. stuff wrong. I'm like, dude. I'm like, I'll all right, well, how did, I was like, how was, how was fucking Stan saying that? I thought he said, like, <laughs> Bohan, but maybe, maybe he did say Bojan or whatever, but. In the back, I was asking. I was like, "Is it Bohan or what?" And there, or is there Bojan, Bojan, Bohan, whatever? Um, I settled on it being Bohan, but maybe I'm fucking wrong or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> well, Sultan Aliyev picked up the win anyway. Yeah. Uh, this was this was uh, not a great fight. It was not a great way to start the night, but uh, it was a big win for Sultan. He uh, had some time off and he uh, picked up the victory. And things picked up greatly after that. So it wasn't the greatest start of the night, but That's it ended true. up being a lot of fun. We heard that uh, he had shaved his chest right before he walked out, and by the time he got to the uh, to the ring, it was fully matted <laughs> like that again. <laughs> <laughs> he is one hairy. He's a hairy dude. Hairy gentleman. What's funny, like, as twisted, you know, it's the first, night, first fight of the night, I'm just fucking bored. I guess already was just, like, something to just wake me up and get me into this. I'm thinking, like, when – oh, man, when they go down the ground – is fucking Bohan going to have, like, fucking rug rash or, like, burn from his fucking <laughs> chest there? Because I'm thinking, like, we're thinking, like, dude, he's going to cut him with that shit. He's going to have scratches like going some, across or whatever. Like a, like a Brillo pad or like something? Like a Brillo pad. Like, it's a secret weapon. He just grows it, and it's, like, titanium strength hairs or something. I don't know. <laughs> but we're... T- we had, we were having some fun at his expense or whatever. But good, good dude, man. He's a fucking beast, man. But uh, good for him. You guys have your little crew in the back, dude, right? It's you. We got it. We got to keep. Got you, I mean, we keep ourselves entertained. Casey from MMA Fighting. Yeah, Dave, Dave Mandel, Mandel from Sure Dog. Uh, Fang Dizzle's back Heidi there. Heidi Fang from the Las Vegas Review Journal. They they've started to pick up their traveling. Yeah. And then other than that, it was pretty much just you guys That's, shooting, right? That was pretty much us. There was a couple of local guys that came in and out. Uh, of course, some of the Faber teammates or some of the the Sacramento people came in. Um, they weren't throwing down on the Mizuto Hirota uh, scrum. No, not so much, not so much. But it happens. But yeah, it's funny. We have a, we have our group, our group back there that it, uh, we take care of each other. <laughs> we have, we have some fun. That's awesome. That's we have awesome. Some fun. All right. Well, uh, listen, it's it's getting late. We got to do a little bit of editing. I've got to down some award winning Pats Blue Ribbons before we fly home tomorrow morning. Yes. Uh, next week is Christmas, but we're gonna put together a show. We'll figure out something. I'm not sure how we'll do it yet, but. If everything goes well, we'll have our conversation with Dana White on Tuesday. So that could certainly provide us with some material yeah. uh, to talk about. Uh, of course, there is the possibility of all coffee, no cream. <laughs> There's always a possibility. doesn't mean it'll happen. Cold coffee's not down for that whatsoever. I mean, I'm just trying to say. People, the the, the poor bastards that think that's a good idea, I'm, I'm just trying to save you from that. I'm trying to save you. Because right now you're getting me in small little bits. You don't want me for too long. Or or it'll be like the shortest show <laughs> in history. I'll be like, hey, guys, welcome to the show. It was great having you. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> 15 Thanks for minutes. Coming. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I'll come up, I'll have to come up with my own little catchphrase to leave. You know, thanks for. Deuces. <laughs> Deuces, <laughs> dudes. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We'll uh we'll figure something out. It's Christmas. We're not gonna break the street though. We're gonna we're gonna make something happen. And uh then after that, of course, it'll be USC two oh seven. And then we get shit started for two thousand seventeen. Get this bad boy going all over Crazy. again. Two thousand seventeen. Nuts, right? Crazy. Nuts, right. All right, well listen, uh you hear me sniffling? It is so cold in here. It's, just, it's, like, I it's think, looking California, but feeling Minnesota out there. Well, I man. think it's just being tired. We need yeah. some sleep. Yeah. Yeah. We should wrap this up and get some sleep. All right, then. Well, let me just say thanks for listening.